you go in and uh, and they announce the three shamans. They've flown in the three best shamans in Peru, basically, uh, from different camps, different parts of the jungle. One is local to where they're at. So it's like a battle of the DJs. It's, it is, exactly. And you choose which one you want to work with. So they announce the first one, a long lineage of what he's done. And he kind of integrates some of the Christian saints with some of the ayahuasca work, works with the, you know, the masculine aspects, has a big bio of all he's accomplished. So I was like, all right, whatever, but I'm not really going to be into the, you know, kind of mixing of the Christian ideals. So wait for the second guy. He has his own psychology clinic in the in the jungle, and he's helped build this hospital and blah, blah, blah. Another big, long thing, and he sings these sweet songs. And then they get to the third guy, and uh, the third guy, they say, only say, he's the most traditional and the most terrifying. He calls upon the spirit of the dragon, and that's it. That's all they said, and I was like, that's my guy. That's my guy. That's the one. <sighs> That's all they said about him? That's all they said about See, him. See, less is more, people. Yeah. <laughs> the Clint Eastwood approach to shamanism. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> okay, so um, is this the first night that you this get there? This is the first night. So yeah. you get, they got you right into it? Right into it. Wow. Okay, so day one. Day you one. You pull up in a canoe. What time do you actually get to the camp? Is it noon? About 3.30. 3.30 in the afternoon. Yeah. Do you eat first or no eat, eating? Yeah, we ate, we ate right then at 3.30, but then that's it. No dinner. Right. Because the ceremony starts at 8.30. This, okay, so they recommend five hours, that's it, to purge your system? Yeah. I thought it was like a, they will ask for 12. Um, this one, they didn't, you know. But the food that they are serving is like light. jungle food. You know, yeah, uh -huh. it's like light, it's clean, it's all grown out there. They what do you eat? What kind of food? Uh, a lot of vegetables, a lot of quinoa. Um, they had some, you know, like fresh, free-range chicken and a lot of uh, tilapia type of fish, things like that. Like really kind of light. And they're catching like everything the, themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So um, you, you eat, you sit around and just wait for the yeah, party to I got begin? Yeah, I know my roommate and kind of wait for it. And then they talk about it a little bit. And then you have a few minutes to kind of gather yourself. Okay, so um, they sit you down. And how do they determine the dosage? Well, it's, it's an eyeball test from the shaman. So we, we walk in. We, I, have, I have by far the fewest people with our group because people were scared of the dragon. And they didn't nice. go. So I had like, you know, 10 people. So we went to a small hut in the secluded part of the jungle. So a long walk. My, uh, my fearless compatriots were kind of laughing and joking around. And I, I felt confident, but I was very calm. I knew I was going into some pretty intense work, you know. So um, we, get it, we get in there, and then, you know, they do some of the opening ceremony. And we all have a puke bucket kind of near us because, you know, most people purge during this process. It's part of the healing process. And then uh, he calls us up one by one kind of looks, you know, looks at you, assesses, and then pours a coconut, pours the ayahuasca in like a polished coconut husk, and, uh, and you drink. And it is, it is thick and bitter and just tastes like earth and, like and fire. Like, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's, it's tough to go down. I mean, it's very thick and Did very everyone bitter. drink it? Did anybody? Everyone did. And once you're in the ceremony, you got to drink. No. No observers, no peeping toms on the action there. Does the uh, shaman get in as well? He does. He, but he drinks. He drinks kind of steadily throughout the thing. He doesn't, you know. He's kind of always drinking and always, because that's how he creates his, you know, his world that he's that he's doing. So. so, by creating his world, he's not just concocting the the formula. He's also beating a drum and blowing cigar sm um, tobacco smoke. And what is he doing? Yeah. So <clears throat> what he, you know. 30 minutes it was just silence in there and then he starts what's called his ikaros and the ikaros are his songs, songs and the songs that you know was taught to him by his grandfather who you know they trace it back grandfather to father his tools are he has his breath which he uses more than anything and then he has uh, he has a, a kind of a branch with a bunch of leaves that he uses as sort of like a rattle and those are his tools and his voice and his whistling so and he also has some cinnamon sticks which he chews at the end but I'll get I'll get to that how long does it take so after about, you drink it? About before? 45 minutes, you start to feel people rustling. 30 to 45 minutes. It's hard. I mean, it's cave dark. You don't have a perfect perception of time. But 30 to 45 minutes, people start to rustle. It starts to activate. How big is this cave? This, uh, this tent? hut? Um, probably 20 foot in diameter. So it's tight. Tight quarters for 10 people. So it starts going, and you, know, you start to get that energetic activation, same as you do on mushrooms or something, where you know something's about to happen your closed-eyed visuals start to splash with color and light and things like that um, your stomach starts to gurgle a little bit and then uh, so that was happening and he started his ikaros you know start slowly kind of like it is now whistling and building building and then you know in about an hour you hear the first person just wretch like Rah! 
And it's not like just a gentle bulimic style vomit. <laughs> this is like years of rot just pouring out of every organ that they have. And they're, it's, they're half yelling, half puking when they do it. I mean, it's like, Aah! So it's so, not just the, the, the medicine coming up. There's like a yeah, you feel <clears> it, like you, a sacrifice or, yeah, you or feel like, like expelling bile and things out of your out of your organs. I didn't puke till the second paradigm shifting session, but um, it either goes out your you know you vomit or it finds another mode of evacuation. But anyway, so so the first people start to purge, right? okay, and then pretty soon after that it you smell just, farts it was yeah it was just <laughs> chaos erupting in the room like really? all my so companions farts. like one of the one of the ladies just turned into a blithering child like help me help me help me but another person started pretending that he could sing the ikros but it was like a kid that thinks he knows the words to a song so he was like two beats off and it was awful and then wow. like another lady completely lost her internal monologue and this culminated throughout the night and her finally saying I can't tell if I shit my pants or if I didn't shit my pants, like over and over again. And I was like, oh Shut my up. God. You know, I mean, this is, so people, I mean, people who weren't ready cracked, you know, bad. I mean, that wasn't, that's not the experience you're supposed to get. You're supposed to keep it to yourself. That part was rough in this first, in this first session. And then, you know, right as I'm starting to get, you know, get some serious visions, lady next to me, Hah! and I like shuddered. And she puked all over my socks. <laughs> so I've been pitch black and I'm peeling off the wet, chunky wool from my feet and put them on the side and just curl back up on my mat. No way to clean it. It's fucking pitch black You're in the middle of ceremony starting to trip balls. So that was, that was the start of it. Um, and it was kind of signatory for the way the rest of the night went because it was intense and dark. And uh, what started happening is snakes started coming in through the jungle i had visions of snakes and they would look at me and then immediately start savagely like going inside my body and like eating my organs eating my throat <laughs> like going down my throat and eating their way out and like exploding through my body and i know enough from psychedelic experiences to just witness and allow and just let it happen you know because if you try and fight it you're you fucked know, you're fucked you can't they were more like um they were a bit ephemeral, you know, they would change too much in color, and the way that they would come was not necessarily slithering on the ground, they were coming from the air. And they all so, have top hats on. And what did they look like? Snakes. What did they look like? Uh, they... A lot of them, a lot of them were, were kind of white, they were, they looked actually more like boas or, con or like anacondas, not, not as much like domestic snakes that we'd find out here, but they had that kind of jungle pattern, but they would, you know, they, the colors were off, they were not, they were either too colorful, or they were, or they were white, they weren't like jungle colors, but they were that shape and that size of, mm -hmm. of these things so um so that was going on and then after i you know got used to that then it switched and i kept sliding down these vines of thorns that were just ripping me up to pieces again all of these images were just total destruction of the flesh like, and are you feeling anything while this is happening no, you're kind you're of a seeing. passive observer of your uh, of your body so are you happening. seeing it in the third person are you, you outside are, of yeah. your body yeah about two feet about two feet outside of your body as you're watching this happen to you so you're like looking down on it yeah kind of like you know up here on your shoulder a bit and just destruction destruction and i was I you know <laughs> I, I remember thinking to myself because i was naked when this was happening i was like why did i have to be naked in this thing but that's just the way it was it's just me naked flesh just getting torn sliding down his life and what are you so seeing was, are you seeing blood and injuries and yeah you do you see it all i mean just liquid pouring out of your body it's just complete destruction of the physical form and then and then from there you know insects would burrow into my body and explode and the Jesus. And spiders and things would go and really that was not that was not so bad actually I, <laughs> that was kind of the good part but the, but what ayahuasca will do is it will find your own weaknesses and then use them to fuck with you it's like when you're at the final level of a video game and it's like no you must fight yourself you know <laughs> like that's what it felt like so it started preying on my own fears and i heard a voice telling me exactly what i was scared of which is you know some some illness my family's had some lymphoma issues or something like that so it basically said you're gonna die of cancer you know say your goodbyes you're fucking done you got it now it's bad you know and it was telling me that and that actually started to shake me a little bit you know because I've never had it work against work myself work against me in that kind of magnitude you know I've had visions of things before that were dark and I always worked through and it you know I ended up feeling good but that was a more challenging experience and, and then at a certain point you know I had to just apply the same philosophy and say you know what if this is the end, I'm going to have a fucking hell of a six months, you know, and I'm going to 
do everything I can and enjoy my life. And, and then boom, that ended. And then finally at that point, I was able to get a sense of peace and I felt myself getting sucked back down into the earth. Kind of like in the, the only thing I can describe is that movie Avatar, you know, when the little fibers grow up around the body and it like connects it back down to the earth. I felt this deep relaxation, just like right back down into the earth. And then, um, you know, that was kind of the end. That was the climax of this first experience for me. Did you get a sense that it was a purposeful trip? That the oh, reason absolutely. why it takes you on this destruction of your body and the snakes and everything like that, is it supposed to scare the fuck out of you to break you down? It's, it's supposed to, it's a death rebirth motif really is what it is and uh you know that was the idea of the medicine of the night each each night the medicine had a theme and the first night it was anaconda medicine snake medicine which is shedding your skin in one piece so like a snake does a snake sheds its skin all in one piece this was about shedding everything that you don't need your fears uh your weaknesses all of that and that's why you explore it and i think part of the intent of what the shaman was doing which meanwhile by the way is ikaros were growing in intensity and it was like the room was swirling so, um, so yeah, so that, you know, that first experience. So after he comes by, the shaman comes by, he asks me, you know, como estas? I say, uh, you know, I managed to muster something like bien muerto. And I told him I was dead, good and dead. And he just laughed and, and kind of, that was, I think, when we, you know, he started to kind of give me a little bit of respect because the rest of the room was just crushed, you know, but I, I was crushed too. But at least, you know, I was able to sit up and, and, uh, and kind of deal with it a little bit. So, um, he brings me over to his to where he's at, and he uh, he starts chewing up some cinnamon, and it's the final closing ceremony, the cleansing ritual, and he has me open the back of my shirt, and he goes Shoo! with the cinnamon, and the instant he did that, it was like I was on a bungee cord, and just and this is six hours after I've taken it, you know my the peak of my trip was completely done, and I just went Whoo! straight up and right into this world of just pure energetic vibration that I had no idea how to decode. It was something completely foreign to anything I've ever seen. What did he do with the cinnamon? So he chews it up. He's like cinnamon sticks, dried cinnamon. Right. And then he blows his breath. He goes, Shoo! and forms like a little sonic missile thing. And he put, he points it at different parts of your, different parts of your, like the back of your neck, the top of your head. So he did it four times. And each time he did it, I had like 10 seconds swimming in this world that just I had no possible chance to decode. And it was unbelievable. I was like, what the hell is this? Where am I? You know, how do I understand it? What does it mean? You know, like the YouTube video, but it was wild on that closing part of the ceremony. So what did, what did it, I mean, you can't it like, decode it. Can you it describe was like a, it? It was like a geometrical city of light and vibration, you know, but it was like, it was like looking at, Imagine if you didn't know anything about computer code and you looked at the matrix, right? Mm -hmm. And all you saw were ones and zeros. Right now we know, oh, that's computer code, it's source code. It was like that kind of information was coming to me, but I just, you know, I didn't well, know. Well, that sounds like a DMT trip. Yeah. So yeah. you have a flash, you have a DMT flash. Yeah. So like in deep into another. And he's blowing cinnamon on you and that's what causes that? Yeah, I don't know if the cinnamon's just to make the, his, his breath pleasant and it's his intent or whether it actually has some part of it. You know, whatever he did in that closing, part of it, it I felt like it opened a breach in something else a different hmm. place for 10 seconds for 10 seconds then suck back as soon as <clears> as soon <throat> as that was over I was right back you know, wouldn't last okay so this is day one day one so then do you get up in the morning do you go to bed go to bed do you yeah. wash off to puke or do yeah you... yeah yeah so I went you know took care of everything in the in the in the dark of my hut in the dark yeah <laughs> the cold and dark yeah there's no light at all no light at no all candles, no candles we're using our phones and flashlights and Do you have a charger for your phone um three hours a day you yeah. can charge it for yeah. three hours a day yeah so you're using your but phone you, can, like you don't get any service so right. it's just so a flashlight a little there. flashlight it's expensive okay. iphone flashlight all right so you wash yourself off yeah crash and, out and can you sleep hours. i did yeah or are like, you fucking freaking out while you're sleeping or no, you slept good i felt pretty good you know after that final thing where i was able to relax and felt sucked back into the earth um i felt good you know i felt like I'd learned the de-importance of the physical realm. You know, I mean, now the next day destroyed. at breakfast, is, do people apologize for throwing up on each other? <laughs> yeah, some people were still, some people were still pretty, pretty shook. Like the people in my group were pretty shook. A lot of them didn't go back. Some of them didn't do it again the whole trip. Really? Yeah. I mean, they, they weren't, they fought it. They fought the whole time. And if you fight the whole time, you never release from it. You know, you don't work through it. It's like you get brought to the heat of the battle and then 
you just ignore it and shut your eyes and it goes away but it sticks with you and that's that's one thing that you know a caution for doing any kind of psychedelic work is you got to enjoy got to work through it so for her it was a very she just had very repetitive visions um you know i was surprised that it didn't take her deeper but she was working with some of the, the lighter lighter doses and the lighter shamans um and they could tell that she was the way that they dose you is pretty smart usually they try and dose you to what what they think you can handle so but she was great I talked to them about smoking DMT as well, and I'll get to that when I get... I kind of have to set up kind of the paradigm first, and then I'll tell you what they said about smoking DMT versus taking ayahuasca. So did you go right back in the second day? Second day, no. Second day, no. I, re- I just rested, wrote in my journal, made sure to kind of digest the, you know, what I'd gone through. It's very energetically taxing, but I felt fucking great. Like, I felt reborn, like, energetic. I slept five hours, and I was just pumped. Like, I got a good workout in, and I felt more alive than I have been in a long time it was rad like i felt my body felt great my mind felt great my spirit felt great i felt like i learned some valuable lessons about you know the de importance of the physical realm and i feel like i conquered some deep fears about cancer and, and shit that was going on like it was it like i'm not worried about that anymore like it took me there to overcome it and you know really that first night for me was you know i, I call it my death it was like the old parts of me that night died you know anything weak uh, was killed off by the ayahuasca. So that's the second session. I go up to them. This is the third day. Slightly more comfortable room. Um, the people who from the first session, a lot of them ducked out, you know, but there was new people who like wanted a strong experience. So his legend started to spread in the camp. So we had a few more people, probably 15. Um, and I went up to him beforehand and I said, you know, maestro, I said, uh, medicina fuerte, like emphasize fuerte, like I wanted a strong dose. And he looks at me and he smiled and he remembered that I handled the last one pretty well so when it was my turn to go up he fills the cup to the brim like to the brim and uh you know i look at it and and set my intent my intent was to see how far i could go like i wanted to go back to that place he showed me at the end of the session and i wanted to experience joy and happiness and that side of life the opposite side and just see where it could take me and that was really my goal in doing that and i picked up some tips from some of the other shamans about how to set kind of your own spiritual armor and kind of prevent things from uh, interfering and, and taking you off your intent. So I was like, I felt well equipped. Drank the full cup, three gulps, pretty brutal again. And then, uh, then it starts, and it starts, you know, kind of similarly as usual. Um, you know, an hour in, visions, things that I remember. You know, kind of like a psych. Most psychedelic trips are like, ah, oh, I gotta remember that. That's a good lesson. You know, take little gems from the visions you see, things like that. Uh, at some point, some eels came out of the water. And they started coming after me, and it was much like the snakes. And I looked at the eels, and uh, I, you know, was able to kind of mentally stop them with the armor, which is a trick, you know, opening your witercocha, it's called. Um, and I was like, ah, oh, sweet, they stopped. And I was like, what's up, eels? Like, this is not the day for killing me. And I just told them that, and they like looked at me, and they're like, yeah, okay, I'll believe you, and just bounced. And I was like, sweet, <laughs> like I'm not gonna die today. Like that's awesome. So they leave, and what does it leave you with? What so you, then, where are you? Yeah. So then from there, then from there, things, um, things got. That's when things got started to get crazy. Like immediately, the sensation of my head just peeling off the top of my head happens. And Joe, I've been in fucking a lot of situations and done some shit. Nothing, nothing, nothing could compare to how this felt. It felt like every cell and neuron in my brain was completely synced in perfect alignment and glowing radioactive and I had no top of my head on. It was like, wow, wow. I mean, it was unreal. As foreign to me as any sensation. And it was a physical sensation. It wasn't a mental sensation. I could physically feel my brain like alive from back from my brain stem all the way to the frontal lobe. Like every part of it was full. And I was like, oh shit like something's happening here like this is new like this is a new ball game right and what now. happened from then so from then um right after that happened um you know i started to feel really fucking good like really good and and i was looking around the room and people were vomiting and lots of you know chaos had started around the room but i felt it all as like a kind of like just a cleanse you know like i had a different perspective on it so each one would bring me more like happiness until finally it reached this ecstatic state which was about 10 minutes of just pure straight ecstasy like every cell of my body felt better than it ever had before it was like the exact 
reason why we were given physical forms was to experience some kind of pleasure like this. The only thing I compare it to, and every time I make this analogy, people ask if I nutted my pants, which I didn't, but it felt like that moment of orgasm stretched for like five minutes, 10 minutes. Like I didn't know whether to yell. It was like so crazy, intensely bodily good mm -hmm. to feel that. And then, you know, so I experienced that and that was rad. I was like, you know, that would have been enough right there. But then it just continued to build. And so what happened next is this giant organic flotilla of like snakes and feathers comes like a giant, kind of like an organic mothership comes and it hovers over my head. And these is, this is full open eyed visuals, right? How big is this? Oh man, it was probably 30 yards, 40 yards big. 30 was, yards. Yeah, it was big. It was a massive. And it's feathers and snakes? Feathers and snakes and it's living. It's a living, it's like a living mothership, right? And it starts sucking black smoke out of my body and I see it coming out. I was like, oh, well, I guess, I guess I didn't need that. I was like, okay, take it, you know, like, cool. And it didn't have any physical sensation, but I could see it like coming out of my body. It came out of my throat, came out of my head, came out of, you know, different parts. I guess you could correspond them to the, to the chakras where they were coming out, but just peeling out of my body. I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. And then it just floats off when the smoke started to die off. And then right on its heels, another mothership comes. And this mothership is metallic and it has all kinds of crazy cryptic writing on it, like Stargate, SGI type of writing. That's the only thing I can compare. And your to. eyes are open when you're seeing yeah, this. Yeah, fully. And, and how does it look real? Can you see through it? Does it look like an illusion? No, you can't see through it. You couldn't, I couldn't see anything else, really, honestly. I, it, was, it was black around it. I, my memory of it is that I could just see that, and that was it. I think if I tried to like, focus back on you know, my own reality, I could see some shit in the room. But then, that's all I could see. It was black, and it was a ship. And that was, that was the only thing I was focused on. So it looked like an alien spacecraft. Independence Day style. Fully. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nah, very much like that. Very much like a ship. Not quite that big. And there's writing on it? something it wasn't just smooth you know what i mean it wasn't like a smooth thing it, it was either writing or a very cool design i don't know i mean it, i had no hope to read it or anything but so then it and then it starts shooting this light at me and this was one of the craziest things like as soon as the light comes i like lift my head up like this and open open like put the put my tongue on the roof of my mouth and the light starts coming in underneath my tongue and I don't know why I did that. I have no fucking clue why I did that, but I did it. And I, that's what I needed to do. And I was just started doing it. I was like breathing in this light. It was like I was getting uploaded some kind of information. Again, no physical sensation, but I'm just, you know, just breathing in, you know, breathing in this white light that's being uploaded into me. And then I was like, whoa, this is fucking crazy. You know, and I couldn't believe that I knew that I, that was what I was supposed to do, and but I just did it, and then then the light stops, boom, retracts, ship goes away, and then that at that point, everything just blew out. Like I saw the room again, and then the room just goes, poof, blows out into infinity, and just complete infinity around me. Now there's a couple things in infinity. There's the shaman who's like jutted out on a precipice, who's going pretty hard with his ikaros now, um, and then there's like some terraforming. Like what's it sound like? Oh man, I, if you listen to his video, he he sings it a little bit, but I wish I could get you some. But it's uh, are there words or is it just noises? No. And sometimes there is. Some it's like ayahuasca. You know, sometimes they'll sing some things like that. <laughs> so that's a, kind of a flavor. Obviously, I have a terrible voice. He didn't have a great voice either, but it's, it was powerful. You know what I mean? It's not like he was a singer. He right. Was, it was just coming out. And he was shaking his, you know, shaking his leaves. But he's jutted up on this precipice. And that was at 3 o'clock in my line of vision. 9 o'clock, there's some kind of terraforma and kind of universal stars. And, but it was like, boom, like everything, everything else was completely gone. Everything else I could see kind of vague outlines and white light. You just got a software update. Yeah, for sure. But this is the fucking, this is another crazy factor. I would turn my head to the left, you know, turn my head 90 degrees, and still, the shaman's at 3 o'clock, the terraform is at 9 o'clock. It did not matter which way I turned my head. I could lie down, I could go left, I could go right. Didn't matter. My vision was stuck 
in the same spot. It's like any movements I made in the third dimension had absolutely no impact of what I was seeing in the eighth dimension. Like, I guess if I wanted to look around the, in that dimension. The, why is it the eighth dimension? All right, so I'll get to that. Sorry about that. But that's, that's, that was what I encountered. You know, that's, that's the paradigm they used at the end of it. They call, you know, they call where I was at that point the eighth dimension. And, and the reason why is um, that's the penultimate dimension. That's the last one before the ninth, which is oneness with all creation, which is just, you know, unification with, with all life, all creation that ever was, that ever will be pure solidarity with uh with with god with the universe whatever you want is to that say. supposed to be what you're hitting when he blows the cinnamon smoke on no. you so that was actually no? the seventh dimension is what they were going but, but to go back to where oh. i where i was where i was there i'll explain the, the paradigm as they see they it. give you a map of each dimension <laughs> <laughs> they do afterwards tourist guide <laughs> afterwards so um so yeah so at that at that point no visions were coming nothing was happening to me at all and i was completely lucid so i was like all right what can i do and I was thinking, like, well, what would I want to do? I was like, well, uh, I got a friend who got in a car wreck. I was like, I wonder how he's doing. And he's in Atlanta. And so I was like, I wonder how he's doing. Boom, I see him. And he's in, like, a bar or a restaurant. And I'm like, oh, snap. Like, he just came immediately. It didn't have to travel. Like, I could see him right there. And he's laughing, talking with friends. I was like, well, it looks like he's okay, but I wonder if he really is. And I was able to, like, look in his body. And I see this, like, bad, energetic something, like this black part of in his rib cage. And I was like, oh, that's, that's no good. And I was like, I wonder if I can get rid of that. And I was like, and I like focused on pushing like white, the golden light into his body. And I was like, Phew, fills his body and pushes this little missile out of his ribs. And I was like, oh shit. Like, I don't know if that actually helped him, but that was pretty rad that I was able to do it. You know, I didn't know. I, Did I you ever know. call him up afterwards? I couldn't call. There's no, there's no cell phone. Well, but I talked I mean, to him I later. Yeah. yeah, I talked to him later. He doesn't remember like the exact moment, but he said right around then, yeah, he started feeling way better. You know, so. Um, what you know, was wrong have, with him before that? I just, you know, he had he had a bad impact. Got T-boned with some lady coming off the off the freeway. Hit the steering wheel. Hit his head. So he felt better out of nowhere. Did you ask him, "Hey, man, have you ever been in a bar and then all of a sudden you feel better?" Or did you say, "Hey, I did some freaky, freaky voodoo on you"? Did you put the power of suggestion in his Sad, mind? I mean, you sadly, the next time I talked to him, I was fucking hammered. So I think we just got right into it. It wasn't <sighs> like I. You got to dance around that one. I know. To find out the real evidence. I know. So um, next time, next time I'll do that. But we, you know, he just breezed into town. I was like, "Yo, I'm just back from Peru." Uh, but anyway, so so yeah. I didn't get the proper scientific explanation, but some loose correlation with, with how it worked. Okay. Uh, but more concrete you know, evidence on myself. Um, I was like, all right, well, if I could do that to him, what about myself? And I started scanning my body with my, with my hands and my mind. And it, it was like a car mechanic looking at the car. Like I was completely detached from it. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. Like I did a pretty good job here. Like that's not bad. Like this vessel's pretty good. And I was just giving it like a 10 point inspection. And you know, my glands that have always been swollen. I was like, ah, there's something not quite right there. So I like went and I like physically like started pulling out of out of my glands. I was like, well, maybe I can pull what's bad out of there. And I felt like I did, and I felt like it stuck to my fingers. And I'm like shaking my fingers, like ah, get it off. I didn't know how to get it off. So I like shake it, and some of it falls off. And then I put it in the ground, and some of it like drips off. And then I was like, oh, it's still not working. So I had a water then, and I poured it on my fingers, and that seemed to work. Um, you know, who knows who knows about that? But since then. I haven't gotten, like, a, my glands have not been swollen at all. And I've gotten, like, Epstein-Barr virus that always, like, has them a little bit swollen, but not even a bit since then. But the next thing I did was, um, was I looked at my business and very lucidly looked at all of my marketing channels and different things, um, thought about Alpha Brain, thought about the different things, thought about, you know, very, very conservative Republican-type thinking about my, my life and my business. And I saw some channels that I was working hard to produce and I was like there's no resources there and I could vi physically visualize you know where there was pools and these tubes that were feeding like a giant machine I was like well I'm trying to build this tube to this pool of resources but there's nothing there like I got to cut that one off I was like this one is good but it's blocked you know they got to change that change the marketing you know change something on that so or you know think about this formula or that and I could visualize it perfectly and you know oh, cool. right now you know business is going great yeah, so the, um, you know, the, the way that the shamans continued explaining, fifth dimension is the dream state. Um, that's, you access that sleeping, and you also access that on a general level in psychedelic experiences. 
sixth dimension is the realm, um, is the spirit realm, and the, the kind of the master of that realm is the earth mother, is nature itself. So the snakes that came, the eels that came. That's the fifth dimension? That's the sixth. Sixth. That's the sixth. And we're Where's like, the f what are we in? We're in the third, third and fourth, you know, time third operates. Third and fourth. Yeah, third what's is the, the physical, time, just time, linear time. And, what's, and the fifth is? The dream state. The dream state. The dream state. The collective unconsciousness of all humankind is the fifth. And that's why when you dream, you can access things outside of yourself. Um, you know, think of things that you wouldn't have thought of because if somebody else had ever thought of it, you know, you can access that in the fifth dimension, the dream state, outside of time. So then the sixth is, you know, that's the spirit realm. That's where if you're going to communicate with any of these totem animals or guides or anything. And they actually say when you smoke DMT, you get kind of dropped directly right in the sixth dimension. And there's beings in there that you see, and it's very common report from people smoking DMT that you see beings. And it's because you get rocket shipped directly into the sixth dimension where you're going to encounter these different beings that exist in that dimension. Uh, but the overlord of that kind of dimension is is Mother Earth. So a lot of the things you see are kind of animalistic based, especially for the people in the, in the jungle. Maybe there's different paradigms of that. But then the seventh dimension uh, beyond that is the realm of energy, uh, energetic vibration and large uh, and large entities. And that's where they say the ships came from, for me, um, was the seventh dimension. And the purpose of the ships was to prepare me for travel to the eighth dimension, which is the realm of pure potentiality, they call it, where you can really affect change on all the dimensions before, including the third and the fourth, affect change in the physical body, basically access, see things in your life, have a completely different perspective outside of time, and that's the eighth dimension, uh, kind of the final dimension that you can arrive. So, um, you know, they explained this all after, after I went through and then said, okay, this is where you were here, this is where you're here, and, uh, you know, it, based on my experience, it might all sound crazy, but it's a paradigm that, that seems to work for me because I lived it, and I was there, and I did it, and I saw, you know, I've seen the physical benefits of what happened when I got to the eighth dimension. It wasn't like I just got there and no good stuff happened. I mean, my business, the decisions I made, I've been huge, you know, things are going really well, my health is great, uh, my buddy's good, but who knows, that wasn't very scientific, I'm not going to put that one up in the wind column. So what did they you say should, about man. smoking DMT? What did they say? Well, they said that that's just kind of a, it's kind of a rocket ship that plants you right in that, that right in that sixth, sixth dimension. dimension. But only the sixth be, dimension. Um, Never the seventh and the eighth? They say mostly, mostly not because it's too short of an experience. You can't really, you have to kind of gather steam through the, through the dimensions or something mm, like that. I see. And, and I, the smoking the DMT kind of skips over the fifth where you usually kind of start getting in these dreams it's like wham bam into the six and that's why they say that there's some disorientation there a lot of lessons to be learned and wisdom anytime you sneak outside of time which is how they describe it is sneaking outside of time you have lessons to learn but there you know once you're there you have a short window of time and you're trying to absorb as much as possible um, but the forces aren't there to align you to help you know kind of push you farther because that's that's a process you have to gain knowledge like what happened to me, I had to download something or whatever they said Somewhere. in the seventh to get, you know, to get that farther, like just have more steam and energy to get there. And they talk about it as fuel. You know, the problem with the smoking DMT is the fuel runs out. They have enough fuel to like get you into orbit, you know, but it's not that extra afterburner that's going to come in and shoot you to Mars after you're outside of the atmosphere. You know, eventually it's just going to suck you right back in. And so that's what they say the, the difference is between it's those. The interesting because the intravenous doses of DMT that like Strassman did in those studies, those people had 30 minute trips. Mm -hmm. That's I wonder if that's enough. I wonder if that's a, a different know. takes I you to a different yeah, place. I didn't, I didn't get to ask. It's him supposed to be a more intense experience when it's experienced um, when it's done intravenously. Yeah. It's supposed to be more uh, more in depth and a lot more entities. Yeah. A lot more people being, uh, you know, more of what they uh, would describe that sounds remarkably similar to UFO abduction experiences. Right. You know, that kind right. of thing. That you're dealing with these physical things in this other place. Yeah. It's a real fucking symptom of our culture that that shit's all illegal. That people can, like you, can come back and you get so fucked up that you have to change your name and it's <laughs> illegal. It's yeah. illegal, you yeah, know. It's, That's, it's, a, it's really annoying. It's really annoying that we're in this fucking nanny state, this shitbag, stupid nanny state country. Yeah. 
Do you find any side effects at all? Like, is, does your mind wander in places over and over again? Do you have any no, different night what, what dreams? Was, it or? was the, some of the challenges were just reintegrating, you know, and, and a lot of that's just you get to this different world and experience different things. And, but you leave your life on the treadmill running full speed, you know, and I tried to hop right back the fuck on and I got, you know, tripped up and slammed against the back wall, you know, to use that analogy. Like, it's hard to get back, you know, and hard to find kind of the balance of integrating what what you found out there or not but do you feel that, like um the world doesn't seem the same when you when you came back do you feel uh, anything's changed in in the world no you know i i feel like you know i've i've changed the way i look at things has changed you know the, the fact that i can i view myself now more like a needle piercing a nine layered onion you know and i'm you're consciously aware of the first four four layers you know that part of the needle but you're still connected to another five layers above you and you're just you just don't see it you know just that very thought alone has changed has changed my life you know it's hard to incorporate in everyday and everyday things i mean i've been focused pretty much solely on launching alpha brain and making sure that all goes well and it's been very you know very focused on that but in my quiet moments you know when i can meditate i can think back and and think, you know, what I want to do next time I go down there and what lessons I could learn and how, how you I You need an isolation that. tank, son. I do. That's your next step. I do.